viewers, welcome to Sahara TV. I am Njeri Mbure and with me here in the studio is David Mugo. He is a Kenyan social media and technology specialist. He is also the chairman of the Wikimedia Kenya Charter Board and he was, the, he was among the speakers who came to attend the Wikimania 2012, which was held at the George Washington University in Washington DC, right? Yes. So welcome to the studio, David. Thank you very much. All right. So first of all, um, you did your presentation at the conference, um, the annual conference of the Wikipedia. Can you tell us what your presentation was? My presentation was titled The African Story. And I came up with the presentation because I felt that Africa is not well represented. Generally in the media, the world media, and more so Wikipedia. And since I'm a big part of Wikipedia in Africa, right. I decided I needed to come up with uh, a talk that would tell people what to do and how to do it mm -hmm. in terms of uh, getting better and relevant content about Africa on Wikipedia. All right. Yes, so basically that's what my talk was about. All right. And as I saw your presentation on the African story, I could tell you are coming from various um, stereotypes that people have about Africa. The fact that we live in huts, um, animals cross the street, and a lot more on that. But um, as you went on, I could tell that you didn't wanna, you really wanted to give, like you've said, an African story given by an African, right? Yes. And that's why you guys came up with the Wikimedia chapter and you've told me it's three months old. Yes. Can you just tell us um, the process that it took to come up with this? Well, we've been volunteers for over two years. All right. Uh, we've been doing lots of things, including editing and adding content to Wikipedia. We're a group of about 70 people right now. And uh, we, have, we have projects that we've worked on even before we watched uh, an official chapter of Wikimedia. And uh, one of the projects we worked on is a school project uh, where we've taken the Kenya school syllabus and converted it into a, a wiki and then again made it available offline which means without uh, an internet connection you can still get through to it mm -hmm. and it's very useful for research and studies right. for both students and teachers okay. so basically we've been working on it and we now being recognized as an official chapter gives us a bigger advantage because now we can go ahead and create uh, more volunteers uh, associate with NGOs and government in execution of what we want to do uh, to achieve our mission. All right. Yeah. And um, with time, we know that people can actually create and add content to Wikipedia. So, what are you doing in terms of um, giving the people who come and they are on Google, they want to look for information on Wikipedia? What is it that can make it more authentic? Well. Uh, I agree with you that some people will create content uh, to try and advertise themselves or their companies, mm -hmm. but Wikipedia actually has policies that keep off such people. Uh, if you try to write an article about yourself today, it'll be deleted. True. Uh, because uh, we have certain guidelines that uh, are taken care of to ensure that we have authentic and uh, content that is not either even even uh, politically aligned to us a, a specific side and you know yeah. so there, there are guidelines mm -hmm. that uh, keep Wikipedia content uh, from advertisement and, and biased content All right. yes okay and Nairobi recently has been in the news for becoming very technologically savvy um, innovation is becoming a thing of everyday life in Nairobi so what do you think has contributed to this one, I'd say the government's formation of the Kenya ICT board mm -hmm. was a huge, huge step. All right. And the Kenya ICT board has taken it into their hands to create uh, the, 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 the gap, to fill up the gap that was there between technology and Kenyans. Yeah. And with uh, one of the things that uh, the Kenya ICT board does is the uh, creation of digital content. Okay. Uh, in fact, uh, my friend Kaburo Kobia. <laughs> Is, uh, is heading that project okay. and she's actually a very helpful figure in even what we're doing as Wikimedia and I'm also involved in, uh, in uh, a WordPress user group. Okay. I organize a, a yearly conference called WordCamp. It's actually an international conference but I do the Kenyan chapter as well. All right. And the Kenya ICT board is helpful in terms of uh, the, the, in support and also they, they have grants that they've been giving to people who have innovative ideas and you know so that 
number one has been a big contributor. The other thing that has contributed to the growth is is the the, the fiber connectivity. So the the speed, the data speeds are faster and the cost is less. So uh, every there is more people with access to the internet. Uh, the mobile industry as well has contributed heavily to that yeah, true. because again we have uh, a lot of people doing a lot of things on their mobile phones mm -hmm. uh, either via the internet or just basic text services okay yeah all right which um, leads me to ask this question in terms of the digital divide because of course we have the people who I might have a phone I'm in Kenya yes but I probably won't be able to access the internet but that creates a very digital device in terms of divide in terms of we have people who have more information and some who have less and some are even using it like I saw from your presentation chief karaoke with fighting the crime and everything what um, what are we looking at in terms of solving such a problem can we come up with a bridge to gap this well I can say in terms of, of information there's people who need some information yeah. and there's people who don't actually need it so I would say that one, the, the fact that there's more cell phones everywhere mm -hmm. in the country uh, means there's a channel of transmitting that information. So the other thing is getting the people, you know, to know how to use this technology. True. So because I could have a phone, actually I would say a lot of people with smartphones don't even use them to the half of what they can do. Yeah. Uh, probably because there's no need or because they don't know. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the, the difference is usually how, how innovative can you get? Mm -hmm. Because we have, if you look at the case of uh, Chief Karaoke, mm -hmm. he's getting to people on Twitter. Yeah. But uh, using Twitter, but getting to the people who's, who've never been on Twitter. They don't know anything about Twitter, but he's able to communicate to them yeah. through Twitter. Yeah. Uh, basically, he doesn't go and tell them, go online and sign up for Twitter. Mm -hmm. He will tell them, you know, send a text message to this number. Yeah. He doesn't need to explain that you're actually signing up to Twitter updates. Mm -hmm. But eventually what it does is that he has a channel that he's able to communicate all his messages to a lot of villagers. All right. So he's made actually a, a big story. He's been on every yeah. big media. Yeah, I saw, I saw that and I was like, yeah. wow, this is very interesting. Which is also a reason why we've also come up with websites to fight corruption. Like I paid a bribe and I, I, know, I know it's not only in Kenya. I've seen that India is also using the same kind of technology. Do you think that um, the internet, the website and the social media, they can be used to fight corruption in Africa, especially in countries like Nigeria, where corruption is one of the things that is bringing the country down? Well, I would say both yes and no. Uh -huh, why? Uh, yes, if there was an actual, you know, the, 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 the bodies that are directly involved in fighting or prosecuting corruption cases, mm -hmm. if they went ahead and depended on this information from the public that is coming through these websites. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's a channel that, you know, I am able to sign up and send information about uh, I paid a bribe at this point, but where will that go? Info if, if that information is not used elsewhere, you know, to, to take action or to, to yeah. further be investigated, then help. again, it doesn't help. It doesn't help. So I, I would say it's a challenge to mm -hmm. both uh, when while the public and the, and, the, and the social media world is trying to participate in that. Mm -hmm. I think also governments and the bodies that are directly involved in that should also be involved. And I would say also uh, the civil society, uh, NGOs that uh, push for governance and you know proper governance yeah. should be involved in making sure that the government actually uses such information. Right. So yes, it can work, mm -hmm. but it's not, right now it's not really working how it's supposed to be because I don't think the governments are yeah. using those channels of information. Yeah, but they, if they used it, it would actually work. It would really work. But yes. now it's not because they're not using it. Yes. All right. Okay. And you told us that there are two Wikimedia chapters in Africa, which I know about Kenya, which is the other country? South Africa. And what is it going to take for these other countries to also get on board and be able to contribute to Wikimedia in terms of giving their content? Well, number one, mm -hmm. even without having a chapter, they can still contribute. Okay. What a chapter is, is a, more of an administrative body that is able to run independent projects, even outside the, the, the Wikimedia Foundation, okay. but still within the scope of uh, Wikipedia. Okay. So the other countries can still contribute. 
but uh, the, the process of being a chapter is actually totally decided by the Wikimedia Foundation because it's it's actually being it's it's more like a, if if you had a business here yeah. and somebody wants a franchise or a, a branch somewhere else they have to keep to your guidelines mm -hmm. so uh, but it's 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 not hard to do that it's it's just uh, having a group that is willing to participate and actually be there full time all right yeah okay and um we have so many apps coming up and i know you are a technology specialist so in Africa, in terms of innovation, where do you see us going? Um, do we have do we have hope? Because most of them are not African, unfortunately. But we know that some students are coming up with very good apps. So where where do you see us in maybe a few years to come? I'd like to correct you. Yes, we are doing very well. Uh huh. Uh, I'd say for with the resources that we have within the last maybe three or four years. Uh -huh. Uh, Kenya specifically, I'm, I'm not too sure about other countries, but Kenya specifically, we have done big things. Uh, Kenya is proudly the, 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 the innovator of the biggest mobile money transfer in the world. Yeah, M-Pesa. Yeah, true. Uh, we have uh, software like Ushahidi, mm -hmm. which is also, I think, the biggest uh, crowdsourcing, you know, crowd mapping information. Okay. Uh, Ushahidi has been used worldwide mm -hmm. and it's made in Kenya. It was actually made as a result of what uh, was the, the, the post-election violence in yeah, Kenya. True. A group of uh, Kenyans came together and decided, you know, maybe we should, you know, find a way of mapping what is happening and where it's happening. Yeah. And that's how Ushahidi came up. And yeah. now it's one of the biggest uh, software companies in Kenya. True. Yeah. And we also have iHub. The iHub actually, yeah, there's there's a lot of initiatives like the iHub actually. It's not just iHub. I people, yeah. people, a lot of people know about the iHub. Yeah. But there's the iHub. There's the Nylab, which is actually on the same floor as uh, oh. the iHub. Uh -huh. There's uh, the Power Two Five Four, yeah. which is basically for creatives. Okay. And they've they've actually been really involved in uh, political activism. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I know you know the photographer Boniface Mongi. Mm -hmm. He's one of the founders of uh, Power Two Five Four. All right. Uh, so. There's more innovations and more more opportunities coming up for new and young innovators mm -hmm. uh, to experiment in and to also engage and, and, and share with other, collaborate with other developers. And what does it take in terms of maybe I'm a young upcoming individual, I know I can come up, I'm very maybe very innovative and um, I know you are inspiring some of our viewers right now, they're listening to you and they're thinking, oh yeah, I can do that. What does it really take as an individual to get there? Well, I, I would say your own determination mm -hmm. is, is the biggest thing. Okay. Number two, discipline. If, mm -hmm. if you choose you want to do something, it doesn't mean when it, come, it becomes hard, you drop off. Yeah. It means when it becomes hard, you persevere mm -hmm. and you make it through. All right. Uh, besides that, I think nothing should stop you. Nothing should stop you. Yes. All right. So I know that you are um, taking care of the social media in terms of helping the office of the vice president. At this point, we are at that point of people are taking in more information from the social media than the main media streams. Um, what do you think? Is this a threat to the social um, in terms of the main media? Because we've always expected that they're the ones who are going to give us the breaking news. But now, even before it comes to the main news, because it takes a whole process of production and everything, and people, yeah, and schedules, and people have it on their phones. They already know. So, do you think this is a threat? Well, I don't think it's a threat. I think it's a compliment. All right. Uh, it's the same thing. I think when when TVs came up or mm -hmm. radios came up, mm -hmm. people thought newspapers were threatened. Yeah. But we still have newspapers. Okay. I think what is needed is is uh, creative ways of using old and new media together, mm -hmm. so that they complement each other. And and I think even in Africa, in Kenya specifically. Uh, people like the nation media are, are using social media quite well. Yeah. They, they actually have a lot of the news, uh, everything happening on their website and, and on their social media accounts okay. way before the news time. Yeah. So you can actually live without ever watching the news and you know sure. everything that's happening. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's not really a threat, it's mm -hmm. more of a compliment. All right. Yeah. And for people who are watching this from other countries and they know that they're in the industry of technology, maybe social media and stuff, and they want to also take their countries to the level that Kenya is in terms of where we are going with this technology and social media. 
where do what do you think really they need to work on is it um they need to see whether they seek their government policies to be changed is it companies that of technology that need to come up what really is there is that thing that lacks i guess well i think it starts with the school curricula okay uh i think kenyan universities have given technology a bigger a bigger part of their curricula than any other countries all right uh, second, I think, yes, the government policies. Like I said, the Kenya ICT board has been instrumental in, in the, the, the growth that we've seen in uh, the ICT industry in Kenya. Yeah. Uh, besides that, also, uh, these, the information is very open. It's not necessarily what you learnt in class. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was last in a class in 2002. Wow. And I That's studied uh, computer science. Yeah. I learned PHP. Mm -hmm. That time I was learning PHP three. Now it's PHP six. Yeah. So technology has changed too much. Yeah. And if if you actually want to stay in the know how, you you have to keep you yeah. have to learn something new every day. Mm -hmm. True. And the fact that we have uh, the, the world is just becoming a global village. Mm -hmm. So you can access all the resources that you can access in Kenya as you can access it even in New York. True. Uh, While well, I was in in DC for the Wikipedia conference. All right. I met uh, a group of, an organization actually that has set up a free university online. And they're offering the 12 of the most common courses, including political science, computer science, uh, mathematics, mm -hmm. and all the courses are free. And right now I think they're working on, on getting certification. And I talked to them, actually, we are going to try and set up a campus in Nairobi. Wow. Now, uh, mm -hmm. Campus, by, by what I mean by campus is, it's, it's online and it's free. Yeah. But then we have also connectivity challenges. It's not every household has connectivity. Mm -hmm. So my, what came to my head immediately was setting up a space where people can come in the evening. Yeah. After uh, you've left your job, mm -hmm. you can come and sit. We stream the, 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 the lectures for free. Mm -hmm. They sit and go home. Yeah. And when you complete, we can book your exams and, you know. Yeah, you can be able to sit So for basically, there's, there's a lot more. And, and also it comes from, you know, the, the, the people also need to be, to feel like they're involved. And they also okay. need to play their part. Okay. So you, you keep your eyes open for opportunities yeah. and take advantage of them. All because right. for me, uh, I, I think I always look at what can I do for my society. Mm -hmm. and, and when I saw that, I was so excited. I want, you know, I, I want to give more people more education. Yeah. Sometimes people don't need education for mm -hmm. certification. Yeah. Some people just want to know. And if you give me such a thing, uh, I, I wouldn't need to go and pay school fees okay. uh, or struggle for school fees. I'll just yeah. sit in class, learn, yeah. and eventually use it in my life somehow. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, as we come to our closing, you are behind theaja.com which is um, an entertainment um, website where people get updates of what is happening, which leads me to ask you this question. Looking at the entertainment scene, having come here in New York, um, you can tell that entertainment runs everything. Yes. Um, do you think in Kenya we are headed that way? Do you, do you feel that we will get to a place where even artists can actually depend on just all artists maybe even if because here at least even if you're not mainstream you're underground but you're making a living out of it do you feel that we are headed that way yes, even I in africa sorry in general yeah i think we are because uh, our, our musicians are actually playing on the same level as other musicians it's just that we have of course we still have a way to a long way to go in terms of delivering the same quality and uh, you know the content that these people have here All right but that's because they have more uh, advanced resources okay. and they have more to work with than mm. than just what we have but right. in terms of technology mainly in digital music distribution uh, not just music actually art distribution mm. yeah uh, I think we're playing on the same level. Yeah. Uh, and I think recently I just saw a friend of mine called Bernard, Bernard Kiyoko Bansoft. Okay. He just launched a platform where even young musicians, after you record, you can share your music on that platform and all DJs can access the music. Oh. And, you know, so it's easier to distribute your music to DJs and clubs and, and radio stations. Yeah. As opposed to 
initially you have to know somebody who can you yeah, know go around I, yeah. and even even getting your song to be played is just altogether a big process true so i think we're headed there we have young people with innovation and and i think yeah. if we take advantage of it yeah. it's, it's really going to take us far so technology is also playing a big big part in this yes yes true true it is it is all right so thank you very much david for coming here to sahara tv and um we hope you can come again and be able to give us an update on everything that is happening well, I hope I can. <laughs> <laughs> this is New York. Yeah. A million miles from home. <laughs> you will for sure. All right. Okay. Yeah.